Hello and welcome to official Xbox 360 Magazine's OXM Reports. This week we're talking to Turn 10 Studios, the guys behind the biggest and shiniest racing game on the Xbox 360, Forza Motorsport 4. So I'm here with Dan Greenwald, who's the creative director on Forza Motorsport 4. So, uh, big thing for the, for the British crowd, you've got Top Gear in the game, right? We do. Top Gear is actually integrated throughout the game, and it came through a creative partnership. I mean, we could have just licensed the track, and we do a lot of licensing in the game, but the moment we met with them, it was apparent that there was a, a synergy between our vision and theirs. There was about car entertainment. And I think at first they were like, well, games, you know, we've got our show. And we showed them Auto Vista, and I spoke to them about our vision. And I think it kind of opened their minds to, oh, there really is something more here. So over the next uh, you know, year plus, we were incubating ideas and throwing it over the wall to them. We met several times. They came up with ideas. And we really worked on features together. So. While Jeremy's voice is in Auto Vista, and that's an obvious you know, inroad in the game, we also have an entire channel in Rivals mode that's a Top Gear channel, and that was designed by their creative staff and includes the uh, Kia Seed on the Top Gear test track, of course, for you to challenge your friends against. We also have Top Gear Bowling in the single player, and uh, you know, there's just Top Gear kind of the feeling of it is throughout the game. So I've been looking through your, your list of cars that you've got and there's some really, really interesting sort of obscure vehicles in there. Were you purposefully sort of throwing the net out wider to, to include more bizarre models? We actually look at what the forums and the communities ask for, of course, and we also look at our data from previous games and what people played. And then we work with different uh, magazines and different community groups that aren't into gaming at all around the world to get kind of cars that they're interested in. Sometimes it's overt and we actually do something like Jalopnik. And most times it's actually not over. We just talk to editors. And that allows us to uh, stack the car list and come out with new cars. Now the biggest thing is we have hundreds and hundreds of cars. 500 cars, we'll do 10 cars a month with DLC. But it's the diversity. That's what matters. So we often bring up 80 manufacturers, and that's yet another number. But the reason is to illustrate that there are such so many cars in the game, so much diversity rather than the numbers. And you can't just go for the top end, you've got to go for people's first love, their first car, right, as well? Absolutely, and that's what actually makes it so hard, is because people's first cars are usually a big compromise. It was not the car they wanted, it was a car their sister handed them down, or maybe their father you know, had sitting in the yard for six years. And that means it's a very broad group of cars it could be. So finding that right blend is very, very tricky. You talked a little about your criteria for choosing cars. What's your criteria for choosing a circuit? Because you've added some mm. new circuits to the game. Yeah, so we've added about 20% more circuits into the game. Uh, we already had a lot of tracks in the game. There's a lot more now. And it is the same kind of blend. The only difference is we're also looking for uh, tracks that are used heavily in motorsport and therefore they get a lot of coverage and therefore a large number of eyeballs, not just in one region, but around the world are very familiar with from different leagues. So F1, DTM, WTC, you name it. You don't tend to go for the, the actual championships, but you do have a lot of sort of cars from, from motorsport championships in the game. Yeah, because for us, the car is the star. So you can be a great race car driver in the game, but the fantasy, the overarching fantasy of the game is not to be a race car driver. It's to be a car lover. And uh, these cars speak to people. So cars that you might see in the DTM and the Nürburgring 24 hour, cars you might see in the Australian V8s. But we're not trying to recreate a niche of what if I wanted to be a pro race car driver in the uh, Australian V8. We're trying to say, well, what if you love the Australian V8 cars and you want to have a good time driving them? We provide those cars and a sandbox for you to play with them, take on uh, GT1 cars, take on other classes of cars, and really have those rivalries that never happen in the real world. So obviously people can uh, enjoy the experience whether they're a good driver or not. Tell me about the kind of community features that you've added this time around. Well, community has always been important to us, so we've added a lot of features. We have 16-player multiplayer, and that's great for the racers, but it's also great for this 50% group that don't race and aren't on our forums, what they do is play cat and mouse and all these schoolyard games. So also adding Top Gear Football plus 16 player multiplayer, you can now have eight aside football matches. So it was not only helpful for the racers, but it was helpful for the social players. And then we have car clubs. And car clubs are interesting because they bring together a really diverse group of people. They're creative in different ways. So our painters who are creative, but also they are the millionaires. They're the ones with the money. So they are almost like your sponsor of your car club because they can buy cars. 
You've got tuners. The tuners are the ones that going to make the drivers faster. And then you have the drivers, and the drivers are the soldiers. They're out there winning the races, getting high on the scoreboards, you know, really elevating the club in general. But the whole thing is about a social club. Maybe they're united around a love of Nissan or BMW, or maybe they're united around just trying to own the scoreboards and they're always arguing about which cars. But either way, that cross-pollination is going to bring out the passion.